Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am That British Guy, and today I wanted to talk about the new Nintendo Switch Lite. Earlier this week we got a bit of a press release video from Nintendo, and they were obviously hyping up this new console as a handheld specific version of the Switch. A console that is already a handheld console, which seemed a little bit odd to me, but had a kind of look into it and I thought, okay, well, let's see how they're actually marketing and trying to sell this product and to see if it really is worth an investment. I have kind of very recently got back onto the Nintendo bandwagon and was intrigued because I've basically missed pretty much all of their handheld consoles throughout my lifetime and wanted to see if this was worth my time. Now as I'm sure you're aware and as you can see here I do have myself the regular Switch if you like which obviously can be played up on the TV and you can take it out and about with you as a handheld console anyway. So how exactly is the Nintendo Lite different? Well, for starters, it is completely handheld only. It will not be able to fit in the same sort of docking system and be displayed up on a TV in the same way that the original Switch does. Not only this, but the Joy-Cons that are on the side cannot be removed and kind of turned into a controller as they are with the regular Switch. They are fixed to the casing. They have made a slight change because of this, removing the motion sensor feature from it, the rumble feature, and also they have changed the directional buttons to a kind of more traditional D-pad. Now the directional button to D-pad switch, okay, fine, whatever. The fact that they have removed the HD rumble feature is a bit of a shame, to be honest, but it's not the end of the world. But I think the most problematic change from getting rid of the Joy-Con system is there are now certain games, and they actually feature this in their video, like the 1-2 Switch, a game that I don't have a particularly strong interest in, but I'm sure there are people out there that do. And the problem is you cannot play this game on the Switch Lite unless you have additional Joy-Con controllers because they require the motion sensor feature. So if you really want that game and you don't already have it and you're going to get yourself a Switch Lite, you've then got to get additional controllers in order to play that game. And they made a bit of the video of kind of pointing out what to look for on the back of cases so that you make sure that you can play that game on the Switch Lite. Now undoubtedly there will be some parent, grandparent, aunt, uncle, something or young child somewhere that probably doesn't pay too much attention to this, doesn't really know what they're looking at and will end up buying a game for the Switch Lite that they then cannot play. This is nearly inevitable. I know they've pointed it out on that video but for anybody that hasn't watched that and maybe doesn't own the Switch, but as I say is buying a game for a present for somebody, that is probably going to cause issue in the future unless they make it very clear on the front of the packaging that this game cannot be played on the Switch Lite. Whether they do that or not, we will have to wait and see. Now what was quite interesting though is the fact that they... As this is a handheld console and is to be taken out and about, I would have assumed that what they would do is talk about its new size, how much lighter it is, how much more compact it is, but we've kept the screen as big as we physically can within this new uh, shell. But they didn't do any of that. Now, I have got some information on that, but this is stuff that I then had to go digging for after the fact to find myself on various websites like IGN and BBC and other kind of news uh, outlets. This wasn't in their own video, which probably should have been because I would have made that my main selling point for trying to get people to buy this console. Now, the guide price over here is going to be £199. 
and that is roughly about £80 less than the price of a regular Switch. Okay, well that's obviously a plus. Um, in terms of its size, it's 10mm shorter and 30mm narrower, but the screen has gone down from 6.7 inches to 5.5 inches, and obviously that's kind of the diagonal measurement. So considering you've made the whole thing smaller, obviously the screen is going to have to be a bit smaller, but that's not too bad considering... And in terms of the actual sort of depth of the console, it is exactly the same as the regular Switch. Now, the regular Switch's weight is 398 grams, and the new one is going to be 275. So they have shed a little bit of weight there, obviously. I think a lot of that is probably features within the Joy-Cons that have been stripped out and obviously its reduced size has meant that it's going to be a bit lighter anyway. But again, this is information that I had to go digging for myself rather than what was fed to us. Quite interestingly, what they have managed to do is keep the battery life pretty much the same. From what I can find information wise, depending on the game that you're playing and obviously with the Switch as well, depending on sort of how you're playing it as well in terms of kind of tabletop or handheld, the battery life of the regular Switch is between sort of two and a half to six and a half hours and with the Switch Lite it's going to be between about three and seven. So the battery life is pretty much the same. That's also very good news because obviously they have reduced the size of it and the weight of it, but they've managed to keep the battery life pretty comparable with what we've already got. However, as this computer does not dock in the same way that the original one does, quite how this is going to be charged hasn't been mentioned. Presumably it's just going to have some kind of AV input and you plug that into the mains in order to charge it. Now from what I can see the charge time of the switch is around about three hours but no information that I could find has been released based on the switch light so hopefully it's going to be a quicker charging time. So this kind of leads me back to my original question really is it worth getting? I can't really see who this is for it seems like they're trying to market it more down kind of the child friendly aspect because it's smaller and a bit more lightweight. Not that the Switch weighs a ton or is really kind of difficult to manage. I know I have adult hands but they are not the biggest hands in the world and I've not really seen any kind of major issue, complaint, any big stories that have come out with regard to this being very very difficult and unplayable for children. Also, if you are marketing it towards children, one, maybe make the colours a little bit more child friendly, like who decided on grey. And also, if that is the case, maybe feature children rather than kind of elder teens and young 20 year olds in your video at a skate park. Have some, I don't know, five and six year olds playing it, maybe. Just an idea if that's who you're trying to market it to. So yeah, when you consider that you've taken the Switch, which for me, its best selling point was the fact that it did switch from a handheld device to a home console system like that. With no issue, you could just carry on playing your games at home and then when you need to, undock it, put your Joy-Cons back on and then you can play it outside whenever you like. That was the best selling feature for me and to remove that seems absolutely insane. When the Game Boy came out it was different from the SNES. When the Game Boy Advance came out it was different from the N64. When the DS's came out they were different from the Wii but this seems like they have just gone well because the Switch is handheld already we won't release a different handheld console with different titles on it with kind of a different market to it we'll just take the console that we've already got force it to be handheld only and then just sell that because that's easier and I just don't see why anyone would go for this there's nothing wrong with the original switch if you just want to use that as a handheld only device and 
because it's got that adaptability that the light won't have, I just don't see the point in the light. Maybe if you know that you're only going to use it as a handheld device and you don't already have one, maybe. But I just think having that adaptability is probably better. So they are my thoughts on the new Nintendo Switch Lite. If you have any thoughts or opinions yourself, please let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. You can also follow me on Twitter at Rightly Wrongly and find me on Facebook at ThatBritishGuy86. Till next time though, I've been That British Guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.